Going up, up and up, when it keeps going up, you feel like you're doing something right, even though it's just the market going up. Hello everyone, welcome back to the number one place for you to learn about the art and beauty of dividend investing. And today we have the Robinhood Challenge or renamed to the M1 Finance slash Fidelity Challenge because <clears throat> I'm saying goodbye to Robinhood. It has failed me a lot, but I've done so much this week and I really wanna show you exactly what I've done and let's get started. And just as a note, if you have never seen this series before, the Robin Hood Challenge or the Dividend Challenge is basically me depositing $200, rain or shine, whatever happens in this world, even if there's a virus going on, I deposit this $200 into my portfolio every single week. So this is my Robin This is my Robin Hood portfolio. Currently, I'm at thirty-six thousand five hundred and sixty-three dollars and ninety-four cents. By the day, I'm up by two thousand four. $2,393, up by 7%. By the week, I'm down by $6,213.02, down by 14, 14.527%, 14 it keeps changing. By the month, I'm down by $21,061.23, down by 36.54%. By three months, I'm down by $19,239.37, down by 34.45%. By the year, I'm down by $17,600 or $599.02, down by 32.47%. In my all-time charts, I am up by $3,842.84. It keeps changing, but I'm up by 11.68%. And you see this like giant like dip over here? It is just basically me transferring uh, stocks out of my Robinhood portfolio to my M1 Finance portfolio. So like all these percentages are not so accurate and you can see I am like I do have margin right now and I do have my cash management card thingy. So um, this is great. This is like another change but at the same time I don't think I'm going to be using Robinhood anymore because it's just been giving me so much problem with like the trading like when I want to buy and sell stocks it just keeps on going down and I just don't think I'm going to personally use Robinhood anymore. And so let's look at what I've done. So when you go to history over here, and then you can take a look at, um, let's start with like the six. So on the six, I did a lot. You can see over here on the six, I bought CCL and then I bought MasterCard, Facebook, Boeing, Elf, Revolve, and then Facebook, and then Elf, and then Revolve, and then Elf, and then Pisa, and then Facebook, Facebook, MasterCard, 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 MasterCard. <laughs> Facebook, Elf, Uber canceled, and then 3M also canceled, and then Facebook, and then this is a free stock that I sold, and then I got Facebook, 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 CCL, Facebook, 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 Revolve, Facebook, Facebook, <laughs> Pfizer, wait, not, yeah, Pfizer dividend of $2,066, and then I got Boeing, and then also a free stock that I sold, and then I got more Facebook, Uber, CCL, Facebook, MasterCard, Visa, Tesla, Uber, Facebook, MasterCard, <laughs> Facebook, CCL, Visa. So all these are limit buys. You see, I just keep repeating the same stocks. And then this is the ninth. Like this is the biggest reason why I decided to abandon Robinhood because you can see a lot of my buys are just failed. Like, what do you mean by failed? This is just so annoying. So a lot of these buys are failed. All these Facebook and MasterCards are failed. And you can see over here, I also have dividend from Microsoft, $1.53. And then 3M, $39.69. I already got paid. And then again, MasterCard limit buy and CCL limit buy. And all my pending stuff, I have my pending deposit from my checking account. And then there's also my uh, referral from Jordan. So thank you for giving me a GoPro, GoPro stock. And there's CCL dividend, $13.50 and PSEC, $1.80. So because Robinhood is being so freaking annoying, I moved some of my, or I didn't move some of my stocks, I moved some of my purchases to my Fidelity. So I started a taxable account, just like a, I call this a growth portfolio with Fidelity. And the reason why I want to start my growth portfolio with Fidelity and not M1 Finance is because with my growth portfolio, I do want to pick what price I buy it at. So that is why I don't do it with M1 Finance and I do it with Fidelity instead. And let's take a look at my Fidelity portfolio. So this is my Fidelity portfolio. As you can see currently, my portfolio value is $24,727.20. By the day, I'm up by $268.52, up by 1.01%. But I believe my all-time chart is still shows 
uh, loss, I believe. So if you go over here, these are all my stocks and you can see in my total, total gain and loss, I'm still losing almost 300 bucks, $297.63. And all these stocks I bought this week, the reason why I am starting to build a pretty big portfolio and big uh, what do you call it, big position in these stocks is because now that a lot of things are on discount, we've officially entered bear market territory. I just want to take advantage of these opportunities and buy these stocks at a discount price. And so you can see I have a Baba, CCL, Disney, Elf, Facebook, Revolve, Starbucks, and this is just like cash and then Visa. So all these stocks were in my Robinhood portfolio to begin with. And then I just kind of continue to buy them in a different portfolio because I don't want to use Robinhood anymore. And I'm also in the process of transferring my Robinhood stocks into my Fidelity portfolio. And so if you want to know how I do that transfer, I made a video about how I transfer my Robinhood stocks to my M1 Finance portfolio. So you can check that video out. And also if you're interested, I can also make one specific to Fidelity if you want to do that. And so over here, you can see my overall portfolio is today is like pretty green right now. So I'm not thinking about buying anything new, but with this virus going on, we really can't predict what the stock market's gonna be. So I do have like some cash set aside just if there's any discounts going on, I'm going to be going ham again with all the purchases. So that is with my Fidelity portfolio. Again, all these stocks I already have, I'm just building more positions. And by far, my biggest loser, total gain and loss is CCL and ELF. So these are the two stocks that I will keep a close eye on. If they fall really, really low, then I'm going to buy again. And also another helpful chart is this 52 week range. So you can see CCL is at like almost the lowest and Disney's also at almost the lowest and Revolve is almost at the lowest. So this is also a really helpful chart to see like where are you in terms of the range? Are you at the lowest of the 52 week or are you in the middle? Like where do you land? So that is also a pretty helpful guide that I found. And then now that we looked at Fidelity and Robinhood, let's take a look at my Weibo portfolio, which is also my fun money. And I parked a little bit of money there. I'm still debating if I should just like sell them when the market gets warmer because I don't want to have like a million portfolios at the same time. So this is my Weibo portfolio. Currently I have McDonald's, Alteryx, Nokia, Tapestry, AT&T, and Bank of America. And if you look over here, you can see my portfolio net account value is $596.15. And then you can see I have the unrealized PL of 23%. So Tapestry is by far my biggest loser. And then Alteryx is still my only winner as of right now. And then Nokia is also down 37%. Bank of America is down 27%. AT&T is down 13.62%, McDonald's is down 15.12%. So you can see a lot of these are down, which is expected because all of these stocks I also have in my Robinhood portfolio. And if you saw in my Robinhood portfolio, it got hit pretty big. So I'm not surprised that my Weeble portfolio is also pretty bad. But, but, but with Weeble, there's one thing that you should keep in mind is that if you don't have a Weeble portfolio right now, be sure to go to my info box to deposit $100, like sign up for a new account, um, uh, deposit $100 and get your two free stocks because this is like risk-free. You don't have to be worried about losing money on your free stock because they're free to begin with, right? And so over here, you can see that is, that is this is very steep decline. If you go to my one year, you can see <laughs> steep, steep decline. But yeah, that that's, that's like the stock market for you. It can be really, really volatile. It went like from a thousand, a thousand to right now like 595. And another good thing about Robinhood that I've mentioned in some of my previous videos is that it also allows you to do paper trading. So if you go over here to the menu tab and then you click onto paper trading, this is where you can do paper trading and you can see that my paper trading, uh, paper trading portfolio is also down by 13.98%. Not as bad as my actual portfolio, but still pretty bad. And so this goes to say the stock market is like a really moody man and sometimes you can get really excited and sometimes you can get really angry or sad and depressed for no particular reason because yes, the virus does affect our economy pretty directly, but at the same time, these should not be long lasting effects. So as investors, we should stay logical and not feel so much panic and never panic sell. 
And then last but not least, let's take a look at my M1 Finance portfolio, which is where I do the majority of my dividend investing. So over here, you can see my portfolio went down by 13%. This is the first time that I'm showing a loss in my M1 Finance portfolio. Usually it's a gain. Well, usually for all my portfolios is a gain, but I feel like at this very particular moment, it's kind of hard to still have a gain. I, I'd be surprised if people show like a gain, like if investors show a gain in their portfolio. And you can see over here, I'm down by 13.63%, down by $2,662.18. And I also deposited more money into this portfolio because of like the discounts going on and I want to buy more stocks at this very moment of discounts. And if you go over here, you can see my net cash flow is $2,115.56. And the reason why the net cash flow is so low is because apparently after I port some of my stocks over, after I transfer my Robinhood stocks to my M1 Finance portfolio, they are unable to show me the data behind like before that so before that you probably saw I had like a 40% year-to-date gain or yeah year-to-date gain but right now I I have like a negative gain and you can't see anything before that it says since March 3rd 2020 and so that's why it is it's not as good honestly I want to see the overall data but if they're unable to do that yeah. So over here, you can see my earned dividends is $19.11. Again, this number was much, much larger before, but because they only count from March 3rd and currently it's only like March 13th, uh, yeah, I don't have that much dividend. And you can see my overall return is $13.60 or 13.63%. And then let's take a look at my pie. I did make some adjustments to my pie because of current market volatility. I did make real estate, tech, and bonds and finance my four biggest sectors. And then I made some minor adjustments and then I have my healthcare, consumer, telecom, and utilities as my next four large pies. So overall, I only have eight slices, real estate, tech, bonds, finance, healthcare, consumer, telecom, and utilities. And let's take a look at what is inside of each of these slices. So over here, you can see I have Realty Income, NRZ, Wall Tower, LTC, and Store Capital, and Simon Property Group. So these are what's in my real estate. I got rid of some of the smaller percentages because I just don't see the point of holding on such a small percentage. I don't want to over diversify. And in my tech, I have Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Visa, Alphabet, and Alteryx. I'm still bullish about tech. That's why I put it like quite high up. And this is quite different from like some other dividend investors. But then because I personally like reading about tech, I like learning about tech, I put it in a higher percentage because that is my personal preference. Not that this is the best way to do things, but I feel like as an investor, this is your place to do whatever the frick you want with your personality, with your preferences, because this is a space for you to create your dream portfolio. So that is why I am not really like following other people's guidelines and just doing my own thing here because I am very bullish about tech. And then you can see over here, I have bonds. Bonds is like a new, I, it's not a new addition, but I decided to make it bigger because bonds is like relatively a good choice at this very volatile and bear market situation. And so you can see over here, I have LQD, BNDX, SHY, IEI, IEF, and SPHD. So technically speaking, SPHD should not be here, but then I want to keep my pies clean. I put SPHD here, but SPHD is a S&P 500 high dividend, low volatility fund. And so you can see over here, I have five shares of this at the moment. And by the day, it is up by 4.47%. And I believe I ported this from my Robinhood portfolio. Not much has changed for my other sectors and other slices. If you want to see my overall portfolio overlook, check out this video over here where I show you exactly what happens in my portfolio and that is it with my m1 finance portfolio and before you guys check that video out i just want to tell you that this is a very very special moment that we're in i'm currently just looking at like so much rain in la and it honestly it's so fitting with the situation with the virus going on and with the stock market volatility and the bear market this is such an interesting time to be in and i feel very very blessed and fortunate to be able to witness this all and to be investing at this time if you're just thinking about investing honestly i wish when i entered into this investing world it was already at like low prices because this has a lot of buying opportunity and 
buying at this time will really help you grow your portfolio so much more because you're able to obtain these stock these valuable companies at a much lower price point whereas when i started invest day the market was still at its like ninth tenth year of the bull run and everything was just going up up and up there are pros and cons to each because when it keeps going up you feel like you're doing something right even though it's just the market going up and then right now when everything's down it might be more scary to put your money into the stock market but coming from experience and reading like all these books and learning from all these investors, I learned that it's best to invest more when the market is low. It can feel scary that the market keeps on going lower, lower, and lower, and you're just throwing your money into like a hole that does not get filled up. It can feel like that, but then just trust, just trust the knowledge, trust what you've learned, trust the investors who are doing so great, trust Warren Buffett, trust your logic. If you're putting money into valuable companies, it doesn't matter matter what their temporary stock price is because you know they're going to bounce back because you know these companies are valuable. So just do your analysis, do your homework, do your research, and then have faith in yourself, your knowledge, and your logic. And I really hope that you are not to panic about the situation. I know human psychology is almost the total opposite of what you should do in the stock market. So this is why it is so hard to have long-term success in the stock market, but I hope that you stay healthy, stay hydrated, and stay calm with this volatile market and see you in my m1 finance dividend investing tutorial video if you want to do dividend investing with m1 finance and not care so much about the stock price because the the premise of it the nature of m1 finance is that it does not allow you to buy at a particular stock price so you don't necessarily feel too worried about the current price which is good for beginners good for people who are long-term investors so check this video out and i'll see you there